Number one, why are sharp knives more effective than dull knives? Hint, think about the definition of pressure. So welcome to the gas chapter. Woohoo! All right, so basically talking about sharp knives versus dull knives. Let's draw a picture, right? A sharp knife would basically have a point at the end, right? Basically, if we have like a long knife, it would come to a point. And that's why it's sharp, right? So when you cut something, it has a, a point at the top or at the bottom, and that's why it would be classified as sharp. So here's my sharp knife, but a lovely drawing versus a dull knife. So basically it would be the same knife, right? But then you wear it out and the tip is going to get a little bit curved. So it's not gonna be pointy at the bottom, right? It's going to have this kind of like curve to it, right? And that's why it would be classified as dull. Now, we have to talk about this in terms of pressure. Now pressure, there's many different formulas for pressure, but the one that comes to mind in this case, especially when we're talking about why one thing is more effective than another thing, it's the pressure formula right here. So basically pressure, which is P, and here's pressure, is basically the amount of force, F is a force, per some type of A, which is an area. Now, in this case, we're going to be talking about surface area. Now, if we talk about the knife and the, basically the sharp knife versus the dull knife, look how much area there is at the bottom of the sharp knife, and then look how much area there is for the dull knife, right? And maybe I'll just make this a little bit more apparent, right? Versus all of this. If I take the same thing, right, and I maybe have it come to the same exact point, right, do you see how the dull knife has much more of a greater area than it does if it was sharp, right? So the surface area of a dull knife would be much higher. So the surface area, I'll just say SA, surface area is increased for a dull knife at the tip versus a sharp knife. It's coming together at a point, so you don't have a lot of area in that specific point over there. So the surface area for a sharp knife would be low. So now let's just talk about why sharp knives are more effective, right? Pressure and surface area, the A, are inversely related, right? The pressure is technically in the numerator and the area is in the denominator. If they are on opposite sides of a fraction, meaning if one of them is in the numerator and the other one is in the denominator, that's always an inverse relationship. So pressure and surface area are inversely related. Maybe I'll say that related. So that means if the surface area increases, right? If I increase the surface area, the amount of pressure that is going to be put on that knife or what that knife can give out would be decreased. And then vice versa, if you have a low amount of surface area, the amount of pressure that you can put out would be higher. Now, given that these are the only two that are changing for any given force, we have to keep the force constant. So for a given force. So basically, if I were going to use both of these knives, right, and I apply the same amount of force as the sharp knife, as the dull knife, since the surface area of the dull knife is higher, the pressure that would put out would be much lower. And then since the surface area of the sharp knife is lower, the pressure would be higher. And that's why you can cut through more things more effectively with a sharp knife over a dull knife because of this idea that surface area is directly or actually is indirectly or inversely related with uh, pressure. So hopefully this helped. This was kind of like a theoretical concept type question, but I hope you guys got it down. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and we're on our way to the gas chapter.
So let's keep rocking and rolling. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.